Hi, my name is Sam from the Wildlife Trusts, and today I'll be talking to you about how to identify some common butterflies. Now, I love butterflies. They're one of my favourite things to spot at this time of year in nature. And the good news is that whether you've got a garden, balcony, a window box, or just some green space near to where you live, there are plenty of common species out there right now fluttering around for you to go and spot. You can enjoy spotting butterflies on a walk or in your garden without needing to know their names. But personally, I really enjoy being able to watch a butterfly going about its day and be able to tell from its size, its colour, and sometimes even by the way it flies, what type of butterfly it is. As you spend more time watching them, you'll get better and better at identifying different species. Practice makes perfect. So, let's get started. You might have heard gardeners refer to the cabbage white butterfly and how its caterpillars just love to munch on their vegetables. But did you know there's actually no single species of butterfly called the cabbage white? When people use the term cabbage white, they're normally referring to one of two different species, the large white and the small white. Now both of these butterflies can be seen on the wing at this time of year and you can find them almost anywhere, including gardens. Both these species have a mostly white upper wing and a yellowy coloured underwing with a black spot in the top corner. Now the large white, apart from being a bigger butterfly in general, also has a bigger black spot which extends further down the edge of the wing. Both these species when they're flying together can be really tricky to tell apart so the best thing to do is just be patient, wait for them to land and then you'll have a better chance of seeing whether it's a small or a large white that you're looking at. Large and small whites are sometimes called pests because they do tend to eat their way through gardeners' vegetable patches. I think some of these cabbages may already have had a visit from a large or small white. But they're still both a lovely sight to see on a summer's day. And unlike some other species of butterfly, they will happily eat more than one type of plant. So if you've got a vegetable patch, consider growing some nasturtium for them to eat instead. There's one other butterfly that sometimes gets called a cabbage white, and that's the green veined white. Now this species looks a lot like a small white, except for the fact that it has a lovely pattern of green looking veins on the underside of the wing. The next species to look out for is the meadow brown. This is one of our commonest butterflies and probably one of the easiest to find. As the name suggests, meadow browns are mostly brown, but they also have dashes of orange on their upper wings. You can usually tell males and females apart because the females tend to have more orange than the males. Sometimes it can be easy to get the meadow brown mixed up with another species of butterfly called the gatekeeper. But you can usually tell the two species apart because the gatekeeper is smaller and has a lot more orange. An interesting fact about meadow browns incredibly involves their smell. The male showers the female with scent scales prior to mating. Now two big butterfly fans once did a study into the different smells that butterflies can produce and they claimed in their report that meadow browns smelled like an old cigar box. Now red admirals are just incredible and at this time of year we'll start seeing more and more of them fluttering around our parks and gardens. But did you know that the red admiral that you see around your Budlia might have travelled hundreds of miles to get there? Earlier in the year, red admirals will travel to the UK from as far away as North Africa. They then reproduce and their offspring spend the summer here before flying all the way back again before winter sets in. Red admirals get their name from this lovely red stripe surrounded by a beautiful velvety black colour. And there's also a few white spots around the upper wing edge. Red admirals are also one of our largest butterflies, so they're a great one to look out for if you're new to butterfly spotting. Towards the end of summer, red admirals face a long journey back to the Mediterranean coast, and they need lots of nectar from buddleia bushes like this one. But if you don't have room for a buddleia bush in your garden, leaving out half an apple or a piece of old fruit like that can also give them the energy that they need for the journey. Peacocks are a brilliant butterfly to keep an eye out for because they can't be mixed up with any other species. Nothing looks quite like a peacock. You'll spot the lovely crimson colour from a long way off but what you can't miss are the four big eye spots, one in each corner. And these eye spots aren't just for decoration. If a predator sneaks up on a peacock looking for an easy meal, the butterfly will flick its wings open, show off the eye spots and scare the predator away. Now, as well as being one of our prettiest butterflies, thankfully peacocks are also one of our most common and they love to visit gardens for nectar. If you leave a little bit of your garden free to grow a nettle patch, you might even get some peacock eggs as well. Budlia is a fantastic source of nectar. Along with red admirals and a few others, peacocks are the species I'm most likely to find tucking into my Budlia on a summer's afternoon.
So, what are a few important things to remember if you want to spot some butterflies? The best conditions for butterfly spotting are on a warm, clear day with plenty of sun like this. So try to avoid windy days like this and rainy days like this. Some butterflies, like the meadow brown, are less worried by these conditions, but the vast majority of butterflies simply won't come out at all on windy or rainy days. They can be tricky to get near to, but if you approach a butterfly slowly and carefully, you'll be surprised just how close they let you get. Try not to approach a butterfly with the sun behind you, otherwise you'll cast a shadow that could scare it away. Also remember to bring along a pair of binoculars, that way you can get a good look without needing to get really close. Remember to protect yourself from the sun and drink plenty of water when you go outside on warm days. And do take care against biting insects as well. Today we've only been through a handful of the common species that can be seen at this time of year. There are plenty more out there for you to go and discover. I hope you've enjoyed this video and have a summer full of butterflies.